Hello and welcome to the Casino Traders Group. This is our weekend wrap up trading plan for February 20th, 2010. Our website is blog.casinotraders.com where we put together effective video technical analysis trading plans on a daily basis. Trading plans keep you focused and centered, let you know what's coming down the market, both for your open trades and as you're scanning for new trades. But by focused and being disciplined, it cuts down your research time and you have time to support your family. Well, the week that was certainly was a good week. Uh, it was a shortened week, as you know. Uh, we only had three forge uh, sessions. Um, and uh, the market ended up 300 for the Dow, 33. And if you remember our video last week, we all of the markets are basically down 3 to 5%. You can see now we're just fractionally down. So certainly uh, something to be excited about or happy about if you are long. Um, again, the market was able to uh, garner out gains for the sessions. All all of our sectors ended closed, um, unchanged or higher. Uh, the big thing for the week was the uh, the minutes of the FOMC, and uh, where they basically said that they're going to continue to keep rates low, but at the same time they did raise their discount rate to uh, 0.75, I believe. Uh, uh, Thursday after the close, and you know, again, here's one of the things that's important about. Uh, not having a bias and being neutral in a sense that strength strengthens the dollar which usually means a weaker market and yes the market was down pre-market um, uh, on Friday this again happened after the close on Thursday but the market did close higher on Friday so again it's, especially as a futures trader you just want to trade the moves but even as a normal stock options trader you don't want to go into the market with a bias you want to consider continue to be uh, neutral and trade what the charts give you. Um, although the dollar did show some strength, um, the market still was able to continue to, to uh, c go higher. Um, and then the earnings and economic data really wasn't uh, impactful at all this week. Um, basically, we had Deere and Hewlett Packard and Walmart uh, basically topped their uh, earning ex estimates but nothing that was you know blowing out of the wood and then of course their targets weren't exactly uh, blazing a trail either same thing on the economic front um, although jobless claims did come in higher than anticipated again you can't you, you initially would think that that would push the market down but it didn't it did temporarily but there was a rally um, uh, also we had um, housing starts that went um, came in higher than expected in CPI, but overall, again, not really moving the market. So, what do we have this week? Well, we do have GDP coming out this week, so that certainly can move the market. Uh, going into uh, Monday session, we really don't have any economic news, no earning news that can move the market. Even throughout the week, we don't have a lot of earnings that's going to move the market. A couple split places for those who are interested, uh, but again, GDP will probably be the strongest move as we wait for next week, the first week of March, we get some new uh, job numbers. So let's start off by looking at the Dow Jones on a daily chart and a couple things that we're going to notice here. Now what we talked about on last week was this 10,250 level. This is what we were watching for last week, primarily because of the support that we saw at this bottom of this consolidation. So as we were sitting down here, we talked about the natural uh, potential of running up to here and seeing what happened. Not only did we come up to these, again, support from this uh, consolidation period of November and December, we broke it, we are broken above the 50 moving average, and now where are we at? Well, if you've been with us for a while, you know, we, also as a part of this consolidation was a resistance level of 10,500. So I think that is our, our natural spot here uh, to be looking at on the Dow. We've broken here. We've broken the 50 moving average. The other thing you can see is um, uh, the, the 5, the 10, and the 20 moving average are, are swinging back up above the 50, which certainly is a bullish indicator. But the other thing to notice that's important is um, the volume. And as we started to go up um, here, as we started going up, we saw a decrease in the volume. We saw a decrease in the volume. and uh, But we have a pickup on Friday to kind of keep us up. Now, what's interesting about that is what? Remember, we started down today. 
and the volume came in to keep us higher. So, um, you know, certainly has the potential to be uh, bullish. But the question is this. We have a up move on lighter volume, you know, Friday, give or take. Uh, and we know that that's bearish. The other thing we have to look at is what is going to win. Well, first of all, we've made a new swing high. Notice we're above this swing high that was a test of the 50 moving average, and we broke down. Now that ice hole failure pattern that Dave Elliott talks about has broken because we broke the 50 moving average. We broke all the moving average. So we made a new swing high. But at the same time, we had the potential for making a swing low. So what's going to win? The swing high or the swing low? The other thing to look at is that we have a nice Elliott wave pattern going on here, a nice down move, down one, up two, and the next part of that pr progression is another down three. So there's some things to look at. Let's switch over to the uh, NASDAQ. The NASDAQ could be once again taking the lead. Uh, as we uh, take a look at this level right here, um, you can see it's, it matches up with our, our gap down and it, we're kind of swung up there. So this 2250 level certainly is an area of interest. And that's basically where our high of the day was. Volume was pretty much level again as we move up we didn't get a tremendous amount of volume which again has a tendency to be bearish but on the NASDAQ this consolidation period of November and December we've broken that we have broken that so uh, the NASDAQ could be leading us higher you can see all of our moving averages the 10 the 5 the 20 have basically come to or about to break the 50 moving average again that also would be bullish and we have the same pattern here where we have a nice swing high or do we have a nice potential uh, new swing low which one's going to win let's finish off with the S&P 500 and we're going to see the same thing as the Dow nice test of the 50 come down made a new swing low we can see the uh, November December consolidation and the resistance and so we're up below that here on the uh, S&P 500 so this 1115 seems to be a good area of interest for uh, re resistance for the S&P 500 so a break of that certainly would be good as we potentially go and test the January highs Uh, let's take a quick moment and look at some sectors. As we all know, the Dow Jones uh, transport average is typically a leading indicator. And you can see we came down, never really tested the 50 moving average, one, two, three. And now we're making a new one. We're making a new A. We broke the 50 moving average. Uh, so certainly if we can get above the 4,100, that certainly looks interesting. Uh, another one is gold. Now gold to me is interesting also for a couple reasons. First of all, we're sitting at the uh, 50 moving average. Um, and if you want to say we made the down move here and this is up then the next move technically if you want to look at a typical Elliott wave pattern probably would be down this also would follow well with the Dave Elliott ice hole failure and so interesting what gold will do will we break the 50 moving average or will we make a new low we'll probably break 475 if we do not break the 50 moving average uh, consumer durables, look at that. Nice triple top going on here. Uh, are we going to break higher or are we going to break down to the 50 moving average? Uh, biotech, making new uh, swing highs. Certainly an interesting sector to get into. Aerospace with Boeing, making a double top here. Nice W pattern. Will we break higher or will we retrace back down? Um, transportations were interesting also. Can't really buy into all those because they're so oil related. And finally, internet is certainly another sector that looks very strong. We're going to talk more about our education video in part two of our video. We're going to break, basically break our video down into two parts, stocks and futures. Here's what we're going to be talking about in our futures version. But as you know, we have some partners that we love to share with you. We've got a great trading room for you, a 10-day trial of $30. Uh, Monday, you know, the market was closed. Tuesday, uh, the lead caller made $1,300 using three contracts, $300 on Wednesday, $1,100 on Thursday, and he was uh, out of the room on Friday. 
Uh, we've got a great futures broker for you. Intraday margins as low as uh, $300. If you sign up through us, you can get 20 free contracts, which can be up to $200. So you can see we got the actual broker for you. And, and if you want to demo a platform, we got a link for you for there. Got a great charting platform for you to try it out uh, for our stocks so you can scan and filter them out. And we have a futures trading plan to help jumpstart your trading or f transition your trading over to futures. Our podcast is down right now. We have a little hard drive problem that we're working on. It should be take another week or two to get that fixed. And uh, we've got a great video for you to get started trading futures. And remember, you can lose all of your money. Trade at your own risk.